All right. This is part two of our expository video on 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. We left off at verse 12. Now we are going to read verses 13 and 14, okay? In 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, okay? But we are bound to give thanks always to God for you, brethren beloved of the Lord, because God hath from the beginning chosen you to salvation through sanctification of the Spirit. And then the Lord is that Spirit, our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, and belief of the truth. Whereunto he called you by our gospel to the obtaining of the glory of our Lord Jesus Christ. Ephesians chapter 2. Ephesians chapter 2. Ephesians chapter 2, verses 4, unto the close of the chapter. Ephesians chapter 2, verses 4, unto the end of the chapter. But God, who is rich in mercy, for his great love wherewith he loved us, even when we were dead in sins, hath quickened us together with Christ, by Grace ye are saved, and hath raised us up together, and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus, that in the ages to come he might shew the exceeding riches of his grace and his kindness toward us through Christ Jesus. For by grace are ye saved through faith. Through faith. And that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. And those works are reference to the works of the law. Okay? For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God hath before ordained that we should walk in them. Wherefore remember that ye being in time past Gentiles in the flesh, who are called uncircumcision by that which is called the circumcision in the flesh made by hands, that at the time at that at that time ye were without Christ, being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel, and strangers from the covenants of promise, having no hope and without God in the world. But now, in Christ Jesus, ye who, ye who sometimes were far off are made nigh by the blood of Christ. For he is our peace, who hath made both one, and hath broken down the middle wall of partition between us, having abolished in his flesh the enmity, even the law of commandments contained in ordinances, for to make in himself of twain one new man, so making peace, and that he might reconcile both unto God in one body by the cross, having slain the enmity thereby, and came and preached peace, peace to you which were afar off and to them that were nigh. For through him... We both have access by one Spirit unto the Father. One Spirit unto the Father. Who lives within you. See. For through Him, we both have access by one Spirit unto the Father. <clears throat> now therefore ye are no more strangers and foreigners, but fellow citizens with the saints and of the household of God, and are built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone, not Peter, in whom all the building fitly framed together groweth unto an holy temple in the Lord, 
in whom ye also are builded together for an habitation of God through the Spirit. Okay? Okay? Reading verses 13 and verse 14 again in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. But we are bound to give thanks always to God for you, brethren beloved of the Lord, because God hath from the beginning chosen you to salvation through sanctification of the Spirit and belief of the truth. Whereunto he called you by our gospel to the obtaining of the glory of our Lord Jesus Christ. Verse 15. Therefore, brethren, stand fast and hold the traditions which ye have been taught, whether by word or our epistle. Now see, Catholicism teaches the traditions of men. And they point to the oral tradition. And they hinge on whether by word or our epistle. And that's the key. Okay? That is the key. Catholicism teaches tradition. And tradition always trumps scripture. It's about tradition. What are these traditions that Paul is talking about? What are these? Go to John chapter 17. John chapter 17. You know what verse? Verse 17. Sanctify them through thy truth, thy word is truth. Sanctify them through thy truth, thy word is truth. Okay? Now, 2 Timothy, 2 Timothy chapter 2, 2 Timothy chapter 2, verses 14 on to verse 21. 2 Timothy chapter 2, verses 14 on to verse 21. Of these things put them in remembrance, charging them before the Lord, that they strive not about words to no profit, but to the subverting of the hearers. <clears throat> Study to shew thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. But shun profane and vain babblings, the traditions of men, the traditions of Catholicism. Okay? For they will increase unto more ungodliness. <laughs> and their word will eat as doth a canker, of whom is Hymenius and Philetus, whom concerning the truth have erred, saying, The resurrection is past already. Hello? Hello? Okay? And overthrow the faith of some. Nevertheless, the foundation of God standeth sure, having this seal, the Lord knoweth them that are his, and let every one that nameth the name of Christ depart from iniquity. But in a great house there are not only vessels of gold and of silver, but also of wood and of earth, and some to honor and some to dishonor. Note that. Gold and silver abides fire. Wood gets burnt up. Earth, okay? Earth, no. Gold and silver abide the fire. Wood and earth, do you note that? Do you note that? Gold and silver, precious stone, uh, precious metals. Wood and earth are obviously of the earth. You could say, well, gold and silver is too. Yeah, you could say that. But one will abide the fire, the other will not. And you could pour gasoline on the, on the earth and set the earth on fire. Okay? You get it. Let's continue. Okay? 
If any man therefore purge himself from these, he shall be a vessel unto honor, sanctified and meet for the master's use, and prepared unto every good work. Okay? Now, 2 Timothy chapter 3, verses 16 on to verse 17. 2 Timothy chapter 3, verses 16 on to verse 17. All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. And very quickly, Psalm 119. Psalm 119. Psalm 119. Beth. Psalm 119, Beth. Verses 9 on to verse 16. Wherewithal shall a young man cleanse his way by taking heed thereto according to thy word? With my whole heart have I sought thee, O let me not wander from thy commandments. Thy word have I hid in my heart, that I might not sin against thee. Blessed art thou, O Lord, teach me thy statutes. With my lips have I declared all the judgments of thy mouth. I have rejoiced in the way of thy testimonies. As much as in all riches, I will meditate in thy precepts and have respect unto thy ways. I will delight myself in thy statutes. I will not forget thy word. I will not forget thy word. Okay? Back to 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 15. Therefore, brethren, stand fast. What are you standing fast on? The scriptures. And hold the traditions which ye have been taught, whether by word or epistle. The traditions that you and I are to hold to, especially today, for us in this dispensation, the time of the Gentiles, are found, number one, within the scriptures, but most specifically, within the Pauline epistles, okay? And if the traditions that you hold run contrary to the, uh, to the scriptures, your traditions are of men, like Catholicism. Their traditions that they elevate above the scripture are not based upon the scriptures. Oh, you Catholics might argue all day and all night about that. But when you search the scriptures with the traditions of the Roman Catholic Church, the whore, okay, they don't line up. Their traditions are contrary to the scripture. And any tradition, you know, by faith and practice, any tradition that you hold to, ought to be according to the scriptures. You know, like the tradition of Easter, Astarte, of Christmas, Christ Mass. You see what I'm saying? You see what I'm saying? Verse 16 now. Verse 16. Now our Lord Jesus Christ himself, and God even our Father, which hath loved us, and hath given us everlasting consolation and good hope through grace. Romans chapter 8. Romans chapter 8. Romans chapter 8. 
verses 35 on to verse 39. Romans chapter 8, verses 35 on to verse 39. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation, or distress, or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or peril, or sword? As it is written, For thy sake we are killed all the day long. We are accounted as sheep for the slaughter. Nay, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. For I am persuaded, that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Which is in Christ Jesus, our Lord. And finally, verse 17. Let's read verses 16 and verse 17. Now our Lord Jesus Christ himself and God, even our Father, which hath loved us and hath given us everlasting consolation and good hope through grace, comfort your hearts and establish you in every good word and work. Second Timothy. Chapter 4. Second Timothy chapter 4, verses 1 on to verse 8. Second Timothy chapter 4, verses 1 on to verse 8. I charge thee therefore before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall judge the quick and the dead at his appearing, at his appearing and his kingdom at his appearing and his kingdom. Preach the word. Be instant in season, out of season. Reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lusts shall they heap to themselves teachers, having itching ears and they shall turn away their ears from the truth and shall be turned on to fables that the church of the living God the body of Christ is going to go through the time of Jacob's trouble that the time of Jacob's trouble is for the purification of the church that's Catholic okay But watch thou in all things, endure afflictions, do the work of an evangelist, make full proof of thy ministry. For I am now ready to be offered, and the time of my departure is at hand. I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. Henceforth, there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me at that, that day, and not to me only, but on to all them also that love his appearing. Verse 8 again. Henceforth there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me at that day, and not to me only, but on to all them also that love his appearing. Well, brethren, sisters, that is going to be it for this video. <laughs> Two-parter. Uh, like I had said, um, I can only record three hours in one sitting and um, I apparently didn't need to stop that previous video but I did anyway just to just to make sure just to make sure second Thessalonians chapter 2 
talks about the falling away, catching away, and the man of sin, the son of perdition, okay, the beast, inaccurately referred to as the Antichrist. I'm going to link that video in this one and in the previous one, okay? And that men um, will choose to believe a lie, and that God will send them strong delusion. People don't want to accept the truth, but believe in a lie, you got to be careful what you ask God for, because he'll give it to you, see? He'll definitely give it to you. Got to be careful. So anyway, brethren, that is going to be it for the expository video on 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. Okay? Questions, um, go ahead and uh, get a hold of me or whatever you shall do. Okay? And on to the dear brother that asked for this. I hope this helps you, beloved. I spent quite a bit of time, and to be honest with you, this, this is condensed. This is a condensed version of it, okay? Could have been a lot more longer, okay? A lot more longer. And also, too, through this, uh, looking into this, um, there were some things that the Lord had brought to my attention that I was not aware of before. And also the other brethren um, also helped me along with that as well. So, thanks unto the Church of the Living God, my brothers and sisters in Christ. Thank you very much. But anyway, again, that's going to be it for this. Uh, I hope unto you, dear brother, who um, this was for. And it's for the Church of the Living God. Uh, may our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, be magnified. Thank you for watching if you do. Okay? Gotta go, brethren. I love you. I'm missing um, fellowship with the brethren. But they understand. They understand. Thank you very much, brethren. I love you. And we will see you in the next video, whenever or whatever that shall be, okay? Bye-bye. Oop, didn't stop it. <laughs>